Did this deviation from Alexander Kristoff cost him the win in this race, which is stage two of the Arctic Race of Norway, which actually finishes in Finland for the first time, I believe. Interesting parkour, but likely to end in a bunch sprint despite some shallow gradient climbs, about 4%. You know X were on the front working hard, honoring the race honoring the jersey of Marcus Hulgaard, who wouldn't be a factor in the finish. It'd be more for riders like Christoph, Martin Lars, Donovan Popul, Juan Jose Labato, the quick boys, Ryan Cockard as well. So we saw those other teams, Israel Ferruti, Barbier, helping out Unox on the front. And normally I cut this stuff out, but Northern Norway during summer looks absolutely beautiful. So I hope you're happy, Northern Norway or Norway Tourism Board. Hopefully I can go there next year. But anyway, the breakaway dropped two of their riders from Bingol and Balwaza, Janssen and Oliver Narsen increasing the pace, although Narsen would struggle a little bit later. And so after Zverznes won the first KOM sprint against Janssen's, he was allowed to take the other ones. He would take the jersey eventually the weather turned a little bit sour. They had like a summer storm raining on them. Must be pretty humid. And then Janssen's and the Coop rider actually dropped Oliver Narsen. He's not looking in great shape ahead of, you know, typically Britannia Classics where he tries to rack up a, a good podium result in the World Tour race. Getting dropped out of the break a little bit surprising with so much left to go to the finish. Maybe he's just come off a hard training block. But this break was being kept in check. They crossed over the finish border with about 12 k's to go and it was good to see unlike in so many other stages or races in like the last month in the tour de france particularly so many t all the teams that it made sense for them to contribute were contributing uh b and b israel startup nation intermarche etc they eventually caught the break with about two k's to go pretty well planned it was an uphill drag for like the first 500 meters of the last kilometer and then christoph said afterwards that the finish had a bit of a headwind israel startup nation Maybe it cost them a little bit. They had the best lead out. They're on the front leading out for Rudy Barbier. And you can see how deep Martin Lars is. I think he has Rudy Gazelli in front of him and it's Brian Cockard with one man in front of him. Intermarche with Danny Van Poppler just coming into shot. They had a horrendous lead out. I mean, you don't want to go too early. Maybe Israel did go up a little bit too early into the headwind. Well, Intermarche didn't use De Vrent and Van Poppel properly at all. You can see Christoph is positioned fifth wheel. He's behind one of his Norwegian national team teammates. He's in the green jersey, I think that sprinters competition. And so despite not really having his normal lead out and those guys never having raced together, the Norwegian national teams come together pretty well and he, they kept Christoph in really good position. He said he couldn't complain. Into the last 500 meters, seems to level off a little bit. Rig Zabel begins his pull for Rudy Barbier, the last man for him, and you see the Rudy Gazelli dropping off Martin Lars really deep, half in the wind on the right-hand side. He gets lucky with this Total Energies rider who's about to bring him up. Christoph lets his lead-out man's wheel go because he really wasn't going anywhere, and he sits, slots into Rudy Barbier's wheel, jumps out of Rudy Barbier's wheel at the same time that Barbier launches, goes to the other side of the road, comes back to this side of the road. Martin Lars from deep on the left-hand side as we look at it, Pips Alexander Kristoff on the line. He was he was sure he'd won Martin Lars. So confident. And when we look at the photo finish, it was much closer than he thought. I think Kristoff, if he'd I'll show you in a minute, if he'd stayed on Barbier's wheel for a little bit into this headwind and then come out with a hundred, I think he would have won pretty comfortably, frankly. But the question is, with this photo finish that we're about to see, Kristoff understandably frustrated, looking at how close this is. Considering, I know this is not distance, this is time because they take the frames. We know that from Amstel Gold Race, but looking at the rim widths and what Christoph said, it's five centimeters or less that he lost by. It was incredibly close. Did his deviation when he launched, and you can see it here how he, he launched out of Barbier's wheel at 150 a little bit early. And if he'd stayed on Barbier on the left hand side and then came out another 50 meters later, I think he would have won. But did him going from the right hand side all the way to the left and then losing by five centimeters or less to Martin Lars, who had to come from deep, did that cost him not sprinting in a straight line? Well, we're about to see now. So where did Christoph launch exactly? Well, Zabel doing a good job on the right-hand side for Barbier. He's going to launch him. I think he launches a little bit earlier into the wind at about 200 meters. Christoph goes properly into the wind, probably about 180, 190. And he moves over to the other side of the road because he has to move out of Barbier's wheel, who's going out of Zabel's wheel. But Christoph keeps going further to the right-hand side. It's at 150 meters to go that he is on this right-hand line. So 
straight line to the finish, 150 meters if we can trust uh, the signs on the side of the road. And then he's going to start his move back to the left-hand side. Young 22-year-old sprinter on Burgos. Did it cost him? I don't think he was winning anyway, but it's hard to say. It does block him when... Christophe and Barbier come together, but it also opened up the angle for Martin Lass on the right-hand side. So how much did Christophe move laterally? Well, according to the recommendations or guidelines on how wide a finish should be, it's between 8 and 10 metres. He moved at least half of that. So conservatively, let's say, if we're being charitable to Christophe, he only moved 4 metres from right to left. And I never thought this day would come Pythagoras theorem is actually going to be helpful in my later life learning that when I was at school. The straight line Christoph should have taken if he went straight to diagonal line and the finish line form a right angle triangle. 4 meters squared plus 150 meters squared equals the diagonal line Christoph took squared and the square root of that is 150.05 meters which is 5.3 centimeters. So Christoph went 5.3 centimeters further on his diagonal line, and he opened up the space for Martin Lass as well, then if he'd gone straight, he lost, I'm convinced of it, by less than five centimeters. I think he lost by like two and a half, three centimeters. And so not being able to, or choosing not to sprint in a straight line has cost, I think, Christoph the win. Here's what he had to say about it afterwards. I was hoping uh, that the uh, older man can win, but unfortunately I lost maybe with five centimeters. Uh, he came, uh, I think, from quite far back, and uh, he was a slightly headwind, so maybe that was a smart uh, choice, but it's also a bit of a risk to not get the ball in there if you are too much in the back so I think uh, my Norwegian team uh, with Leknesund and uh, Sven Erik uh, brought me really well into the last 500 meters so I cannot complain on the help I got uh, it was really good and at the end it was just my legs uh, I could just not hold him off uh, so uh, yeah I was a bit disappointed actually but uh, at least I'm getting closer. Here's the final top 10 Martin Lars winning ahead of Christoph, Danny van Poppel, Barbier, Penalve, Agnorte, Marit, De Vrent, Welten, Hagen and Cockard. Christoph goes into the leader's jersey though because Martin Lars lost too much time on stage one and Zversnes goes into the much coveted most prestigious jersey of this race, the best climbers jersey. But I hope you enjoyed the video, hope it didn't give you too much traumatic memories of learning Pythagoras theorem at school. Like it down below if you didn't, I'll see you with the highlights of stage three tomorrow which is a much hillier affair, the Saturday stage, where we'll see a different mix of riders, likely Warren Bargui again trying to take the leader's jersey. Until then, ciao.